Okay, I see. Uh, it looks like more than half of them gave correct answer. So good. Let's go to the next one. What does the R function DRFF uh, do? Okay, uh, look like uh, most people know uh, what this function is about. Uh, so what is this? A differ? Uh, the answer you can just look at the help manual. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Sorry, what? I, I don't see what you can just go back and show the answer. The diff function? Okay. Oh, what is the dollar sign in R? Choose a row that will be wrong. Dollar sign doesn't pick rows. You pick columns or variables. So. Yeah, select a column or variable. So that's correct. Any mention of rows is incorrect. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, using R, uh, found out uh, how many how do we find out how many days has passed since March 14, 2020? Uh, uh, none of them are correct, by the way. They all will give a typo, give an error. Uh, well, finally, I see a correct one. So. Okay, yeah. What, what is the error? Is it the double quote? Yeah, you have to quote. Uh, Single code also works. This will be wrong because today has to have the parentheses. So. Okay, well, you can try on your own computer to see which one actually works. Uh, so. All right. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, in, in R, how do we find out how many counties in Tennessee? in the John Hobbs COVID-19 data set. You can actually review your previous chapter two and chapter one R code. You see, found out how, to, how, how do you do this? Uh, how many counties in Tennessee? Uh, By the way, I just realized uh, on LinkedIn, uh, you can take a test in R and Python. 
uh, if you pass, they give you a badge. So, and you can try to take that <laughs> maybe after middle term and see whether you can pass that. It's pretty low. Uh, you get the 70% correct, or they will let you pass, <laughs> so, which basically is a C, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, I don't think that's correct, but uh, spiritually, that probably you can do that. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's admin to or not. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, I will let you try to work on that. Uh, so. Okay, what is the output of the following code snippet? Our code snippet. Ah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, many of them got it correct. That's, I'm uh, surprised. Uh, I hope you didn't try that in your R environment. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be cheating. Though. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's uh, okay. Now, uh, let's. So, hopefully, uh, uh, it looks like many of you. At least familiar with the Luber date uh, syntax is so. At least half of you uh, remember that. So okay, so this the a bit background about the Google Mobility. It's just a uh, by now uh, you probably all know uh, the so called uh, Google. It basically Google Mobility proposed. Uh, how community move uh, differently due to COVID-19. Uh, so it, let's see, the community mobility aim to provide insight on what change in response to policy aimed on combating COVID-19. This is because of... Oh, I see, I wasn't sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the Google Mobility report is uh, is basically uh, comparing the people using the phone, they anonymize how the phone move uh, to workplace, to home, or to park, and then they are they are pattern of those signal moving in those region. They compared with the uh, pre COVID. So, I if this no change is 100% the same. If they reduce, then the before pandemic is 100%. After that, it's uh, either, either lower or up. Uh, so. Okay. So, and that actually uh, can be downloaded as a zip file. Uh, you can, uh, I'm not going to run this code uh, because it take a while. You can download and and then uh, zip it. Uh, oh, I just realized that I didn't uh, put this code on the canvas. So I can, I'm going to put that in the chat window. So yeah, in the chat window. So, so you can, uh, <clears throat> 
And so the download is just put that uh, Google file into Google.zip. Uh, once you have that, you don't have to use R to unzip that file. You can actually, uh, on PC, you can double click on that to unzip that file. But then you need to make sure your, your R code can find out where that file is. Uh, just to make sure, I'm going to update the canvas uh, file just to make sure everyone has the same file as I have. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, update the canvas file just to make sure everyone has the most recent. One. Oh, that's really a lot. That's fine. Uh, it's actually, uh, although I can't upload the camera side, maybe it's not a good experience for you because you need to figure out how to put your file in the right directory. So if you cannot do that, you will have trouble to deal with anything, any new data set. Okay, so I'm going to update the camera side. Oh, I just realized there are also uh, two different courses. Uh, Apparently that is still uh, compressing. Uh, it takes a while to go. Okay, finally it is done. So. It is still uploading. Uh, and the Google Mobility now has over uh, like a, a thousand days of <laughs> mobility data, so it's actually pretty big. Uh, when I first do this, it's very fast. Now that uh, this Google mobility data become larger and larger. So. You need to find out where that is. It's probably to your default uh, directory. It's uh, there's a actually, uh, where did the file go? It's actually, if you use my code, uh, it, it actually goes to okay. yeah, I, I put in a download uh, subdirectory, so okay. so you could yeah. double click on that and extract it. So, uh, probably easier, so. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah.
Well, this is really slow, so I'm going to stop it uh, because the file is too big. Uh, so, okay. Uh, it's much easier if you just install the file on your uh, download and uh, expand it on your own site. Otherwise, the, even the canvas is not let me upload it. So. Okay, so I'm going to let you uh, download that and put the file in the right folder. So. Uh, let me see whether I can. I just generate a smaller file. So, would we just put those files in the uh, Google directory? Uh, you should, yeah. Let me see whether I can have a new file there. So. Version two. Okay, maybe this time it works. Okay, so I updated the uh, with one. Okay, I updated the one course. That's the, <clears throat> let me copy that into a different course. How do I find out which course I'm in? People, look at the people I wonder. Okay, that's for. Okay, is the okay already there? Okay, that's good. So both courses should now uh, have a new. So if you have trouble uh, to download uh, the actual Google Mobility, this updated one, start COVID-19 version two should have that one. Uh, even though I provide to you, it's not good for you. You should try to avoid using it. So don't, uh, download the file, put it in the right directory. It's probably the basic of computer literacy work. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay, so once you are done, put the Google Mobility file in the right directory, and then you can uh, run the following code, read the uh, so apparently Google Mobility has three files now, 2020, 2021, and 2022. 
why don't they put everything into one year? I do not know, but uh, yes. I, I think there's a function Could not find, that means you need to run the previous code. Uh, actually, that's probably also the case. You need to run the previous code because your library has not been loaded before. So I'm going to run all chunk about myself. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, good question, yeah. So actually, uh, I didn't do that myself. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually not really good to run everything before, but it's convenient. We just burn some CPU instead of manually to see where, where that line is. <laughs> so, uh, lady. Uh, okay, so now it, it's done now. Okay, so now let's run read the CSV in the 2020 Google Mobility file. Ah, now it's working, okay. So, but we want to read all three years, uh, 2021 and 2022. So read uh, two more times, but then we need to put the three files together. Apparently Google engineering did a good job. Uh, even though they put three files in three different years, they are in exactly the same format. What it means in Excel, their column name are exactly the same. Uh, so we can just stack, so-called stack the uh, column file together. If you, if, have you used some, uh, uh, if you play the Lego before you, you see the Lego, they, they, you can stack the piece together. <laughs> yes, that's when we have the same size, right? So we can also stack the data frame together using a very simple function called iBind, row bind. And basically 20, 2020, 2021, 23, we all put them together, row bind. That's it. So, and then we just call that table GM for Google Mobility US. Uh, there. TB. Yeah, is a TBGS US. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is just a very large data frame uh, because of Google mobility designed for the uh, entire world. So it had a country, United States, and then it has sub-region one, two, metro area. I have no idea what those are. ISO, census, FIPS. Oh, apparently FIPS is a census code. Place ID, that must be a Google internal ID somehow generated. And then there are dates. There, those are Google mobility. You see the retail, recreation, uh, 2020 February. Well, that's base change from baseline, a very little change, 6%. 2% a park, 15%. Uh, but then let's see if we scroll down to March. Oh, negative. That's decreased quite a lot. That means the, because of COVID, a lot of places uh, start to shut down. So there's a lot of a decreasing uh, of the mobility there. So, so there we go. And then you can have a sense of the what this data really means. And you, when we scroll down, you see, well, later on, you see the percentage change become a less and a less. Uh, so. Okay, so now our job is to use our code to overlay this with what? With the COVID-19 cases. Uh, if you think about with all this lockdown, social distancing, if it doesn't affect uh, COVID-19 cases, 
not to be really disappointed. <laughs> so so uh, we are looking, or well, going to look at this for Hamilton County, Tennessee again, use that as an example. So uh, we are going to pick Tennessee as our state, Hamilton County as our county name. Now, if you recall in, in John Hopkins data set, when, when we pick Hamilton County, we didn't put Hamilton Space County. Apparently in the Google data, Hamilton County is always called this way. It, it's not called Hamilton without space and country. <laughs> so that, uh, that's basically the difference between when we want to so-called harmonize data set between Google and the John Hopkins data set, this is what we have to do. So those are the, uh, so basically when I first look for the Hamilton County, if I, without adding the county, I won't find anything, right? So this is basically uh, the, the difference between Google uh, data format and the John Hopkins. Now not only have a different format, even the uh, information are different, right? So Hamilton County, Tennessee, you thought this must be the same, but like you, you can have your name, a uh, first name, last name. Sometimes you put your first name, middle name, last name. Sometimes you put your first initial, <laughs> right? So you can, uh, people, people sometimes say Andrew, last name. Sometimes that person say Andy, last name. <laughs> so that actually is the same person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, some people call John something. It could be Johnny. <laughs> so they're the, all the same person. Uh, there, apparently Google decided to call that Hamilton County. Uh, yeah. And uh, now, so we can uh, that uh, subregion one is the Google for state. Subregion two is the Google used for county. And uh, if you recall in the John Hopkins data set, that state is probably admin two county, I forgot what. <laughs> what? Oh, the state in the province of state. Admin two is from county, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, so there. And there's really no, uh, not much uh, explanation about this, why Google choose this and John Hopkins choose that. Those are just the way things are, are. So when we are doing data analysis, if we want to merge the data together, basically the person who doing this need to use so-called judgment to decide how to merge the data set. So that's probably uh, the, the, if there's anything important, the, uh, that's probably one thing. Uh, if you want to merge the heterogeneous data set, uh, you just have to uh, learn both data set and then make a good decision how to merge them. Uh, and how to merge them probably also based on the question or the research topic you are studying. And so there's also, I guess no correct way to merge and depend on the question and study. Yeah. So <clears throat> I just showed the answer of my question. Uh, that's fine. So the question is, what's the most recent date in the current uh, Google Mobility data set uh, as we just downloaded? Uh, oh, let me, uh, in all of them, what? All of the data. 
Sure, I mean, of course, it's the most recent one is in all the data. <laughs> so, uh, there, there, there will be 2022 files. It should be 2022, I guess. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. But the question, how do we find out the most recent the date? Uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, I use a maximum command to find out from now. Really? September 9th? That's interesting. I thought September 3rd. Hold on, hold on. Maybe not because I, I, I didn't rerun this code. Ah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I haven't run the previous code. Okay. I'm going to say run this. Oh, it is uh, September 9th. Okay, that's correct. Uh, well, when I run this uh, last night of preparing the lecture, it is still September 3rd. <laughs> so apparently overnight, the Google updated it. <laughs> so, okay, good. Uh, okay, I was uh, surprised. <laughs> yeah, apparently that Google, so in a way, Google didn't do this uh, every day. They had some latency, like every, a few days they are updated. Yeah. What is the report? Is the monthly? Sorry, what? No, not not monthly. Clearly, uh, it, it's not weekly, but they seem to be shorter than weekly. So, from I mean, honestly, you you didn't download the most recent one. So. Okay, what's that? What's that? Yeah. Oh, 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 wait, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, let me do a survey. Uh, the survey is uh. Oh, some people still have twenty twenty one. If you only have 2021, that means you uh, you need to read the, make sure you read the 2022 data there. So you need to make sure your 2022 data is reading. And also you add that, combine them, merge them in the same file. So if the person only, the person only have 2021, August 27, that means the, your code still using the last year's data out of the most recent data. So, okay. uh, yeah, I don't know why Google choose to do this way. Uh, apparently they, oh, yeah, yeah so very good. So. Okay, so okay, so now we can now we are trying to merge <clears throat> the Google Mobility with Hamilton County daily cases. Uh, the daily cases is uh, as Hamilton County is in the file TV daily, my county sub, so, I guess. Uh, so <clears throat> now if, because the COVID-19 data, see here, COVID-19 data actually goes to September 11. Uh, actually, maybe not. It look at how many counties still haven't reported anything. They're all zero, but at least the number are there. Uh, 
But the COVID, uh, Google Mobility data only goes to September 9. That means you have an uneven entries in the two data set. So if you want to merge the two without considering the entries, you will clearly have an error. This is a special case when you, some of you may have studied the database. If you want to use the SQL to do the table joining, then you will have trouble. And here we are not using uh, SQL. We have to use R to do this manually. That means we have to make sure those entries are matched. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it turns out R has a merge function. So there's a merge. And we're going to merge X and Y. Uh, the X in this case is what? COVID-19 daily cases and Y is Google mobility. And we're going to merge by what? My dates, date. That, so before, that means before doing this, we need to make sure both column, both data frame has the column date. Otherwise, you won't have the same variable to merge on. So, this is, we make sure both columns had the variable date. Yeah, both columns have a variable date. And when, yes. Uh, what, what question do we have? Uh, how do we unzip the zip file? The Google, it's got 2022 files in it, but I can't, but there, but there's zip. How do you unzip the zip file? If you're on the PC, you can just double click the zip file and unzip it. Just go to the directory, double click, and then put the, put the, the US uh, CSV file into the R directory. Okay, uh, anyone else still have trouble with the, with the 2020 data set? Uh, it doesn't, it's okay though. If you don't have a 2020, you can still run the code. You just skip the mobility uh, for 2022. So it does not uh, prevent you from running the rest of the code. Okay, there we go, I got it. Okay, very good. Right. So, now notice I also say all the other Y then you, you, you go to, um, this is just to make sure there's no job out from the daily cases. So. Sometimes the, when you, after you do, do the merge, some, uh, sometimes the, it may skip a date, <laughs> skip a few days. And then when you do the plot, you see a gap in your plot. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, that means uh, if you Google, Mo uh, oh, I see. This is actually typical in Google mobility because the daily case is always reporting, but mobility reporting, it has privacy issue. And sometimes Google, don't have enough customer to give them permission to report the mobility. So they just skip those days. <laughs> so, um, so if you, if I don't say everything has to be included, and then that means those days without Google mobility will be skipped. And then when I plot the COVID cases, I will see some gap in my plot. But in this case, when you say included, that means I, everything will be there. They just put a missing value there. Uh, it is, I, I put it there, all dot y equal to, uh, probably also a good idea to also put all dot x equal to the in, just to make sure every entry there is there, so. Um, this, yes, that's for the dates. 
make sure all the rows are kept, even though they are missing value. So, uh, otherwise, they will look for uh, and is true, which is joined, which is uh, the set operation. If, if you recall from your discrete algebra, if you do a set operation, they look for the join. But once you say all the y true, that means they not only look for the joint, they anything in in the x, anything in y will be kept. Yeah, in in this case, all the y go true. We could also put all the x equal to, but in this case, I know all the x have a value, so it's okay. So, no, the columns are always there. Uh, well, you can look at the x, what the x represented. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, we are just making sure that uh, anything, any values that are not delisted or just missing, that's also be included in the column. That will not be good. Uh, uh, so in the Google Mobility, that there are rows are skipped, their days are skipped. So, but in the COVID case, COVID and nineteen cases, every every day, even if there's a zero case, they are also there. But for Google Mobility, when they don't have enough data to report anything, they skip it. Yeah. So, so uh, obviously, I probably learned the hard way. When <laughs> I could, <laughs> when I plotted, I see something missing. I was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so if you do this for other data, you, you need to have some quality check step to make sure those other cases, right? So, uh, so in general, if you write this for any data uh, merge, you should have a quality check. How many rows before, how many entries before, how many entry after, and from different sources, you need to, you need to do a quality check. Uh, so this is probably important if you work for a bank. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a friend who worked for a bank and they did a million dollar calculation. In the end, there's one cent difference. And he was, <laughs> I mean, everyone was, where, where is that one cent good? <laughs> so, uh, So, okay, uh, that's a joke, but it's actually a serious <laughs> in a banking <laughs> system. So. So, uh, so in this case, well, I, we have the uh, combined data now called GN COVID-19 American. So I try to give some meaningful uh, variable name just to help myself, uh, help my sanity. <laughs> so, uh, otherwise, that's so easy to make this thing. <clears throat> so, and this is also make sure that you have all the uh, variable we need. So, so there, in this case, after, in the merge data, so we have date, country, subregion. So those are from what? Those are from the Google Mobility. Um, but we also have daily cases. That's from COVID-19, very good. So there, we do have the merge data set, at least the name there. And then we can, uh, TB COVID-19, my county. Yeah, we can actually do a visual check if you really want to make sure this is correct. <clears throat> so let's do a visual check. Tennessee, Hamilton County. By the way, if you can do a visual check, you should always do a visual check, uh, at least for a few lines, because the, it turned out the human brain is still the best artificial intelligence, <laughs> best intelligence beat any artificial ones. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Uh, if there's a mistake, the human brain is the best way to spot it. Yeah. So that seems to be making sense. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, now, after the merge, what are the most recent data now? Oops, nothing is not running. Oh, I haven't run the previous code yet. I'm going to just run everything below so I don't have to have this mistake anymore. I'm going to say... Uh, Okay, and then just run all the chunk below. Then I don't, don't have to repeat my mistake as I'm missing a line or anything. Yeah. Okay, uh, I should do that at the beginning of the class. So. <laughs> oh, I see there's also another trouble. I don't want to run the weather part. I'm going to stop the weather part. <laughs> That's the next chapter. So, okay, I just run this chapter. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> after the merge, now the date is uh, still September 9th. That's okay, yeah, so that means the Google Mobility one take the priority is, uh, so. Okay, so how many uh, columns are there? 16 columns, 16 variable now. <clears throat> so now we have the COVID-19 cases and Google mobility in the same place. Uh, we now want to uh, overlay them and visualize them. Now, remember in uh, ggplot, if we want to visualize different variable, we need to somehow uh, melt them together. And then use ggplot. Uh, this seems to me it's really a inconvenience in ggplot, but that's the way that they, they are written now. So, <clears throat> okay. So, in this case, I select, uh, in this case, I, I first normalize them. This is because the uh, Google Mobility and COVID 19, they are on different scale. Uh, mobility is minus something to zero or two, but COVID-19 cases is zero to several hundred. So if you plot them, the scale will, the, the COVID cases will skew the mobility data and you, you won't be able to see them. So we put them on the same scale. Uh, the normalization is also useful later on when you, uh, if you if we do a machine uh, deep learning batch training, we need very often we have to do so called a batch normalization. Otherwise, the the machine learning model will be just confused sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, but in this case, we also normalize our data. Uh, so put them on the same scale and then just overlay them. It's actually the same uh, principle, but for different purposes. So. Okay, and the interesting part is the, the daily cases are very small. That means I need to change my daily cases scale. Uh, which daily? I need to change our daily case scale to make it a large window. Okay, but where is my daily? That must be because last time we did the chapter two, we, did, we uh, let me go back to chapter two. <clears throat> we need to, ah, we set a time window to 30 days. I'm going to set it back. Uh, how many days do we have? 900 days? I'm going to set that to 900. 
Okay, now I have to rerun everything again. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, run our chunk below. No, I, I don't have to read download that data. Oops. R is not responding. Uh, okay. Whoops. My R is uh, restarting. Okay. Uh, apparently, when <laughs> with running, uh, Download I stopped it is 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 run into some error himself. This is interesting. Uh I'll just rerun everything then. Restart R and rerun, rerun R. Hold on, hold on. Uh, that's not the right code. It seems like uh, my code is even uh, quick. Okay, this is the right code, I think. Okay, so we finished chapter one. Set the days back to uh, 30 after it crashed. Oh, thank you. I forgot doing that. <laughs> uh, can I stop this? Yes, I need to. Uh... Oh. Actually, the remember that's interesting. It's it's say my nine hundred days, but uh, still crushed. <laughs> so, okay, uh, I'm just going to rerun everything. Yeah. Uh, gee, the Apple quality has really deteriorated over the years. <laughs> uh, I never had the run the R code computer crash the in class before. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the first time you that could crash the in class in real time. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I think it's finished the uh, chapter three now. So let's go back to chapter three. Uh, Okay, the mobility data download. Uh, Tennessee uh, mobility is there. Uh, merge the data set. Yes, the plotting is there. Okay, very good. So, uh, so now we have the daily cases for nine hundred days. Oh, 900 days only go to 2021? Okay, that's not right. Is there another mistake? I'm... What? Yeah, but look, my starting date is 2021, January. Uh, you, you started from 2020? I oh. chose 2020 as well. Okay, still something wrong on my end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, 
let me let me uh that's that's interesting oh, many of you actually start on 2021 why i start from 20, 2021 oh. i'm i'm not going to rerun it again <laughs> so there's something uh still not right on my end uh, uh this is where i start from 2021 uh the Oh, when I merged the data set, did I miss the, did I have a typo? Did I merge 2021 twice? That could be the problem. Uh, let me double check. 2021. 2020, okay, that is correct. Okay. 2020. That's also correct. Okay, but why did I only get the 2021? Oh. Okay, probably another type of song. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to ignore that for now. So, yeah. So, uh, this is normalized. Um, normalization usually. Uh, what what normalizer means is basically it's a least score calculation. Uh, so in this case, uh, daily cases goes peak in is that January twenty twenty. That's actually is the Omicron peak, so that's good. Uh, blue is Google mobility. Uh, green is resident. Residential mobility, so not surprisingly, during the winter break, most people stay at home or travel visiting friends. So the residential mobility green is pretty high. The workplace mobility is pretty low. Uh, <clears throat> now, because the 2021 spring break, uh, uh, the, the, oh, that's also, Correct. In 2021, that's the winter break. And you see the residential also peak and the workplace also is in a valley. So those are consistent uh, winter peak. Uh, what do you think this winter will look like? <laughs> yeah. It looks like every year, look at the uh, 2021 is peak. And then goes down and then back again. Uh, I I bet this year will be again like this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this kind of a uh, overall uh, statistical trend is really hard to avoid, uh, unfortunately. Especially given that in the winter break, uh, people probably will travel. And um, this year, although this year probably will be different because the Omicron is milder. But then there's also other things. Uh, <laughs> so, um, because of the people have been wearing masks again, yeah. and we haven't been exposed to flu very often. <laughs> so uh, so I, people are worried maybe the flu will be more severe this year. Anyhow, uh, because you are doing machine learning, maybe you can predict. <laughs> um, and we don't have the co uh, flu data. We, if we over overlay flu with the COVID cases, that may be very interesting. So, yeah. Anyhow, so but there's also another uh, example. Is like, uh, well, uh, hold on. Uh, we merge the. Wait, wait, wait. Where, where did my plot go? Oh, here. Uh, but why, if we don't normalize it, how would that look like? That's how it looks like without normalization. So the COVID cases, and then the green is the residential, blue is the workplace. So basically it look like, uh, look like there's no change in the green and the blue lines. That's without the normalization. So we know that's not the case because the, we just saw it, uh, <laughs> you see a week, uh, 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 winter break, the people go stay at home, travel to with a friend, and most people don't work in the winter break, Christmas time, right? So, 
Yeah, so there, so that's without normalization. That plot is not very meaningful. So, okay, so that's basically uh, today's learning uh, objective. <clears throat> uh, if we go back to the the initial part, so we learn how to merge and harmonize heterogeneous data set, how to stack data frames and how to do over a plot. Let me open up another question. So <clears throat> the question is, what do you think of the, 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 what do you find helpful the information learned today? Actually, that's just for me. So what, what kind of things do you, you find is maybe helpful? Or useful. Uh, what, what kind of uh, information or technique you found is uh, useful today? <clears throat> uh, let me let me share. Sorry, for those online, I, I just uh, I'm not sharing the right screen. So uh, the question is uh, from what we went through uh, today on chapter three, uh, combining uh, the two data set harmonize and overlay them. What kind of a concept of skill you found are, are useful. Mm -hmm. Useful may have many different definitions. You can use your own definition. Yeah. I mean, the, the stacking tables, mm -hmm. I mean, the stacking, so I have to invent the columns. That's not the same columns, right? Yeah, the same, no, the same column name had to be exactly the same. The question is, if uh, one of the data sets have a different column name, other than two, then you'll have a error or something. Yeah. yeah. So this is a. Uh, well, I guess that's a practical issue. <laughs> okay. I, I was, that's actually kind of surprised. <laughs> I was hoping you talk about data science. <laughs> uh, Normalizing data. Yeah, actually, normalization is is a good concept. Uh, I find, oh, it, actually, that's interesting. It looks like uh, several people think of normalization. Uh, maybe I should put that in the uh, put that learn the value learn the. Learn to use normalization in proper situations. I guess put that as the I put that as the learning lesson next time when I get this again. So thank you. That's a that's a quite informative. Yeah, merging is also useful. Uh, probably have a combined number. Yeah, very good. Okay, I didn't realize normalization. Uh, you many of you found it useful. Okay, thank you. I put that uh, highlight there as well. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. I see you next time. Next time we will. Uh, this time we try the mobility. Next time we're going to try the weather data. It's actually very interesting. <laughs> I didn't know the. Apparently, in the U.S. the uh, agency put the weather data out there. They even provide the API for us to query. Sorry, what? Yes, that the flow data is interesting. That is the CDC. Um, the flow data, I never found out the API how to get it. <laughs> if someone can get it, the, uh, there's a lot of people who study flu data that they published. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a way to get the flu data. I, I, but I haven't found an API or download site to find it. If some of you figured out, you can use that as a course project. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be really interesting how to do that. Yeah, so the flu data, seasonal flu data, I'm, I'm pretty sure CDC have it, but I just, haven't found out the API, how, how to use that. So if, if some of you find it out, let me know. I'll be highly interested in that. So, okay, I'll see you next time. Yeah.
Okay, bye everyone. Yeah. Produce our online. Yeah.